Niger's military leaders have informed the French government that diplomatic immunity has been removed from French ambassador to Niger, Sylvain Ité. And they've instructed authorities to proceed with eviction. France has said they don't have the authority. The military leaders who removed Niger's president from power on July the 26th told the French ambassador last week that he had 48 hours to leave after he refused to meet with the junta-appointed foreign minister. Let's go straight now to our correspondent in Paris, Natasha Butler. And Natasha, in quite extraordinary news, perhaps not unexpected given the recent events, but have we heard anything from France? Yes, the French uh, foreign ministry have reacted. They have told us that they have seen this request uh, from Niger's military leaders. They acknowledge it, but they say that those military leaders have no legitimacy, no right to make such a request because Paris does not recognize them as legitimate rulers in Niger. Now, ever since July, France has repeatedly condemned uh, the coup d'etat in Niger. It has repeatedly asked the military leaders to reinstate President uh, Mohamed uh, Bazoum. There is no doubt, though, that this latest escalation, this latest uh, event, this request from the military leaders is going to be an additional cause of concern uh, for France, for Paris, for the uh, French government, who have said over the last few days that their ambassador, Sylvain uh, Ité, will stay, will remain in Niger. It is going to be a worry for them. And the French Foreign Ministry have told us that they are looking again and reviewing their security operations and the situation around the embassy in Niger. OK, Natasha Butler, thanks very much for bringing us the view there from Paris. Let's talk now to our correspondent, Ahmed Idris. He joins us on the phone from Niamey in the capital of Niger. Now, Ahmed, I know you are actually at the French embassy at the moment. You were struggling to actually connect to a live with us because there's quite a lot of police there at the moment. Tell us what the situation is. About a dozen military and police vehicles are now in front of the French embassy, and we see constantly security forces, most especially soldiers, patrolling the streets around the embassy and the residence of the uh, ambassador, the French ambassador here. So it's still a tense situation. I spoke to one military personnel, and I asked him what the situation is like. He said they're just waiting for orders to execute. They know. Um, the plan probably could be to cut off any communications on the, any link with the embassy or the residents. So they're just waiting for orders. So right now, that shows that nothing has been decided yet as to the eviction of the French ambassador from the residence and the embassy. But right now, what we see is a tense situation. Uh, when we passed here a day or two back, the presence of security forces wasn't as much as it is today. So probably we may see some action very soon. OK, just remind us why the ambassador, Ambassador Ite, had fallen foul of the military rulers. Well, to start with, we, it, it, it's a long process. To start with, uh, I think the final straw was when the Ministry for Foreign Affairs here in Niger invited him to, to a meeting and uh, he, he failed to turn up. And uh, simply because France doesn't recognize the authority of the military junta here. So he didn't go. And the military here feel insulted and they want him to leave. Now, remember, when at the start of the coup, when the coup was announced, the French rejected the coup, they condemned the coup, and they insisted that uh, deposed President Mohamed Bazoum must be returned to office immediately and that uh, they are in support of whatever action the economic community of West African states want to take, including, of course, the use of force. So, basically, uh, that sort of made things worse for the ambassador. Since then, he's been holed up in his uh, residence and the embassy here in Niamey, and uh, he was not allowed access outside the embassy. And uh, that situation continued to escalate after the expiration of the deadline given to him by the Niger military authorities to leave the country. Now, probably we'll see more of these uh, heightened tensions on Saturday when another deadline will pass when the French military troops here in Niger are asked to leave the country following the expiration of one of the defence agreements between France and uh, Niger. Indeed. OK, very interesting indeed. Um, Ahmed, thanks very much for bringing us the scene there from outside the French embassy in Niamey.
Well, David Shin is the former U.S. ambassador to Burkina Faso and Ethiopia and joins us now live via Skype from Washington, D.C. Ambassador, great to have you with us. It sounds like Niger is gearing up to remove Ambassador Ite from the country. Do you think that will happen? Well, certainly the authorities in Niamey, the Nigerian authorities, are in a stronger position than is the French embassy. They have the security personnel on the ground, and if they really want to push this issue, they can. Uh, the question remains, do they want to have that much of a crisis in their relationship with France? Mm. Uh, and they may decide that it's not worth that. But uh, it, it does look like that is where this is headed. I mean, all indications are that they do think that it's worth it so far. They're certainly pushing and pushing. What will be the implications if Ite is forced to leave? I think in the final analysis, the, uh, the French government will be uh, in no position except to uh, allow the departure of the French ambassador. Uh, that will be uh, unfortunate from the standpoint of France. But uh, their, their position is just not that strong on mm. the ground at the embassy. That's the problem that, that France faces at the moment. And also, I mean, you've been an ambassador yourself to Burkina Faso and to Ethiopia. If you can't do your job or you won't do your job, which is to meet the people in power, then is there any reason for you to stay? Well, one could argue that it really serves little purpose. Of course, the big difference is, is that France does not recognize the military government as a legitimate government, so it has no particular interest in interacting with it anyway. Uh, it considers a former President Bazoum to be the legitimate leader of, of Niger and would be perfectly willing to interact with him, but not with a military regime. So you have a, a very unusual situation here. Probably not unique, but it, uh, I'm not aware of anything quite like it uh, in my experience. Yeah, I was going to ask you if there's anything to protect Sylvain Ite in this situation, or are ambassadors' diplomatic immunities subject to the whim of whomever's in charge? According to the Vienna Convention, which covers uh, diplomatic immunity and diplomatic relationships, the recipient government, in this case Niger, has very widespread authority to ask for the removal of any foreign diplomat, to, in other words, to declare them uh, persona non grata. And that is effectively what happened here. Uh, the problem is that France does not accept the edicts of this military uh, regime because of the way in which it took power. So you have uh, some very uh, interesting legal issues that the international lawyers may have to sort out at some point in the future. But in the meantime, there's this very practical problem on the ground. And one wonders whether France perhaps overestimated its influence in Niger because it hasn't been able to show any leverage over the junta and its demands to, for it to reinstate Mohamed Bazoum. <clears throat> I think France probably fully understands uh, what it can and, and cannot do in the country. Uh, it was probably hoping that uh, saner heads would prevail and, and the new government and allow this uh, to play out in a manner that both sides could save face. That doesn't seem to be what's happening, however. Okay. Ambassador Shin, thank you very much for taking the time to join us there from Washington, D.C. Thank you.